Я так записав. Well, I, I guess we should be starting now. Yep. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. This is the last, the last uh, performance for today. Uh, thanks for joining us. <laughs> I'm going to perform my best. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let me introduce you to the speaker, uh, Yaroslav uh, Danilenko. He's uh, a, a founder of Dixie uh, School, and today uh, Yaroslav is going to tell us something about democratic education in Ukraine and his experience of nine years, if, if I'm not mistaken. That's almost right, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so the floor is yours, and yeah, let's get started. Yeah, and we have time until uh, 6.20, right? Yeah, right. 6.20 correct. or 6.30? Uh, 6.20, I believe. Uh, according to the schedule, 6.30. Yeah, 6.30. 6 okay, good. Once again, the class is going to be held... Come on, come on in. Yep. Come on in. It's going to be held in English. Uh, does uh, anybody need uh, some headphones? You can go and get them. Oh, nobody needs them. Oh, that's pleasant. All right, let's get going. Uh, I'm gonna perform solo without the presentation here. Uh, my name is yes, my name is Yaroslav, and uh, today I'm not going to talk about democratic education in Ukraine. I'm so sorry. Uh, I will be able to talk about it more in Vinnytsia in our second part, and uh, today uh, I'm gonna be talking about uh, not th the things that are not that. Uh, important in democratic education, but still uh, quite often they are overlooked, uh, meaning the exact system of uh, pedagogical, educational work uh, that is uh, hidden inside the democratic school settings. First of all, uh, Dixie is the name of uh, our school, which we founded uh, nine years ago. That's a short pre preface. And uh, Dixie was a democratic school from the beginning. Um, I need to clarify what uh, we say by democratic. Democratic school, in uh, our understanding, is, I guess, about two things. First, uh, majority, if not all the mm, things that we do in school, we do through democratic meeting, where a child, a voice of a child, is equal to the voice of the parent and oh, I mean sorry uh, to the voice of adult in school parents uh, don't take part in uh, in our meetings so that's the first all the rules are uh, all the rules in school are decided democratically in school meeting so that is the first part of the democratic school in our understanding I guess that maybe after this conference we need to be we need we will be we will need to devise some new word for democratic because so many people are talking about democratic schools and democratic uh, the democratics in schools that maybe that we will need to devise something more specific when we tell uh, when we talk about democratic schools. So that's the first th thing. And second, uh, children have the same voice. Is I'm sorry, uh, children rule their own life in school. What does it mean that? We have free attendance, first of all. Uh, kids have a right to go to lessons, not to go to lessons, and devise their own lessons, invite uh, other kids to the activities that they are devising, everything else. So generally, when they don't uh, bother or when they don't bother others, they can do everything they want in, in our school. So these are two things that uh, make the democratic settings for our school for Dixie. But I'm not, I'm not going to talk about this because uh, we are here in Democratic Education Conference, so uh, I guess that everybody knows uh, what I've just said, that all the schools are like this, uh, I mean democratic schools. I'm not going to talk about this. I'm going to uh, go a step, for, uh, a step further. Well, after we decided that we are going to be a democratic schools, a democratic school, I'm sorry. Uh, we need to get started. And uh, on that second level, there were quite a lot of options. Like, what kind of schools, what kind of school do we want to uh, have? 
There are lots of types. There are Wild Waldorf schools. There are Montessori schools. There are uh, progressive schools. So there are what else? So I, I have it here. There are Frenner schools. Uh, the, there is uh, inquiry-based learning schools, namely in International Baccalaureate. There are different education. Uh, there is uh, there were some particular techno very interesting technologies. In, uh, there is and there are. Uh, interesting uh, educational technologies like flipped classroom, like uh, that's all what I remember right now. And we had a difficult choice where to start. We decided to start with uh, Park School. That's a system devised by uh, Miloslav Balaban. This is a Russian scientist, uh, he's a linguist. And, uh, we enjoyed the system, basically, uh, from uh, two reasons. First, we just liked it. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm talking we. Uh, I shouldn't be that modest. Uh, it should be I. I liked it. Uh, that's my school, so I was free to do whatever I wanted. So I liked the system, and we introduced the system. It's not that much democratic. Nobody had a voice in it. And uh, I liked the system first. And second, uh, it was in... Uh, Russian, so almost native to us, and uh, third thing, uh, there were schools uh, nearby, not exactly nearby, but in Russia, uh, which were working with uh, Park School, and uh, we could tap into the experience. What is Park School? I have some notes right here, and uh, well, Park School is based on the concept of knowledge as an organ, like our hand, or our eyes, or any other organ in our body. Which means that we can develop it, our knowledge, as an organ. And uh, I guess that uh, it, it would be best to show, what, uh, show how Park School works uh, by an example. For example, you are standing nearby a building. And uh, somehow you understand that the homeostasis in, uh, around you has changed. Like something is changed. You can't still percept, you, uh, you cannot percept it, but you understand that something has changed. Some moments pass and you understand that there's uh, something in the air above you. And that's your second step. Uh, your third step, you understand that it might be dangerous for you, and you step uh, step back, and some brick falls uh, falls uh, on the ground. By this example, we can. Uh, s uh, I want to uh, explain to you how Park School works. Miloslav Balaban, who's the founder of the system, says that uh, our concepts about the world is on several. Uh, degrees uh, of deepness. Like, for example, small kids know about political systems that uh, nothing. So there is nothing in the uh, in the concept in the world of uh, in the world about politics. When they turn, I don't know, six or something, they knew uh, that they they knew that maybe there are good political systems and bad political systems. They start with this. Uh, when they are teenagers and maybe they have some classes of uh, some law classes in their school, they get even more deeper and they understand like I enjoy this system more than this system. If they are still interested in politics, they delve deeper. And uh, here, only here, only on this step, like third step, they. Uh, have a real knowledge of things. They uh, try to understand what is, uh, how government works, uh, uh, how different governments work, what is law, uh, how uh, justice works, uh, and so on and so forth. But the important thing is without the first steps, the likeness or dislikeness, the interest or no interest, the uh, just meaning of uh, this concept in, in uh, their world. They won't be able to understand politics. 
And uh, Miloslav Balaban says that our educational system is uh, uh, working only on the third level, where they, uh, uh, where they know what they want to learn, and uh, they know that they like it, and they want to delve deeper, uh, without uh, working with first several steps. So, what I'm the concept of Park School is like this. Hmm. I'm sorry, it should be like this, <laughs> generally. A kid. If we are talking about politics, that is what he knows, and that is what interests, that's the level of his interest in the topic. If, he, if we are talking about uh, some slime activities, or oh, how to make, uh, I don't know, uh, ugly things, or, uh, or beautiful pictures if we are talking about girls, that is the level of his understanding, and that is the level of, uh, of the deepness of his understanding. And uh, that's something, that should be something in between. Uh, so what I'm talking about is uh, each uh, person education uh, is different, and uh, each person should study and work things that interesting that are interesting to him not some general co not some general concepts uh, for everybody and park schools said you can do it how when a person uh, the f founder of the system devised different activity different activities for different uh, level of understanding of the concepts uh, when a person doesn't know anything about, uh, let's say, politics still, uh, he needs to understand whether it is interesting for him or no. And there are some activities for that. When he decides that it is interesting, uh, and, but he is not sure whether he's going to delve more deeper, uh, just deeper in, into the topic, there are some activities for that. So, uh, for example, Five uh, fifth grader and tenth grader can be in one class, but they are uh, they are working on different activities. They are working about something connected to the water, for example. But five class uh, kids in five class they are working with uh, just uh, the broad concepts, while eleventh former, which are on the deeper level of the understanding, they work with different concepts much, much deeper according to the age, and not really about the age, about the level of the existing interested, uh, interest and knowledge of the topic. So that is the first uh, thing about Park School. There are different roles in a studio. Uh, how does it look, um, how generally, how Park School looks? There are different studios, and uh, a person can uh, join each, join any of them. In the in uh, each studio, like for example, here's art studio. Here's uh, I don't know a workshop. Uh, here is uh, math, and here is some science. And the person decides where should he go. And after he decided, he joins that studio in one of three roles. First, a guest. I don't know anything about. Uh, carpentry, for example, but I'm interested to have a look. What is it? I don't have a right to actively participate in a lesson, but I have a right to sit and ask no questions generally. Uh, to sit to observe the activities in order to understand whether it is uh, whether I like it or no. That's the first uh, first role. Second role is uh, ac active participator, if it's possible. Participant. I'm sorry. No, active participant. When a person uh, moves to that role, when he decides that this topic interests him, interests him, and uh, he would like to understand and to learn more about this. And the third role is uh, apprent apprentice, I guess. Apprentice, apprentice, um, apprentice. Thanks. And the third role is uh, apprentice. When a person knows quite enough about the topic, the last level generally in this uh, system would be to teach others because when he teaches others uh, two things are happening first he learns more because when you teach you learn 
and you understand the topics more clearly, that's the first. Second, he helps others to learn. Well, why? Because when the gap of understanding is not big, kids learn better. They learn better uh, from a person who knows a bit more, not a person who knows tons of tons more, because they don't have a contact, they don't have a clear, uh, in, in the latter case, uh, uh, they are not on the same level. Uh, just professional sport, uh, pro professional athletes don't understand uh, amateurs because they are di totally on the different stage, and it would be different. It would be difficult for them to establish a contact and work. That's about roles in the studio. Third, they have a age mixing because. Uh, Studios are based not on the age, but on the level of uh, understanding of particular topic. So if a person starts, I don't know, swimming at four, at uh, seven, he might be quite proficient with it. And a person who goes, uh, who's like 16, and he's in the pool for the first time, is not going to be proficient in there. So age mixing is perfectly okay. That was the topic, uh, that was the the system which we started with. And we've been working with this for, I, I don't know, for a year and a half, I guess. <coughs> I'm sorry. Before I move to the next uh, step, to the next system and the reasons of uh, why we change educational uh, paradigm in the school, maybe anybody has any questions? Did anybody understand? Yeah. One and a half, one and a half, yes. That was the system which we started with, and um, we've been practicing it for a year and a half. Was we're some, I'm sorry, who understood the system uh, which we have been talking about? Yeah, thanks. Uh -huh. Well, there are some words. Uh, I'm only getting started and getting warm up, warmed up. I'm sure that the second one will be better understood by everybody. Uh, because I'm just translating it in uh, in my mind. I hope the translation will go away, and it's going to be more fluently. At least that's what I hope. Yeah. I'm sorry. W once again, is the is there a teacher in the studio? Yeah. Uh, generally, there is a teacher, but uh, an apprentice can uh, work uh, alongside with the teacher or a teacher can be out and his apprentice can perform the class. It depends on the level of understanding of uh, active participants. Like when, if uh, active participants in the studio are very proficient and then the knowledge of uh, apprentice won't be enough, so a teacher is needed. If it's not the case, then a teacher won't be needed. So generally, uh, I guess that self-directed uh, learning uh, centers are based on similar stuff. Like you can uh, do whatever you want if you are proficient. If you are not even proficient, if you can, uh, if you want to uh, teach a class, and there are people who want to come to your class, you are free to do it. So generally, that's a similar concept. All right. Well, well, why we moved from that concept? Well, generally, kids stopped coming. That uh, was uh, quite a problem. Uh, so when uh, there were different uh, possibilities of uh, spending their life in school, and uh, we have uh, two, uh, at, we started small. We've been uh, ten. We had ten kids first year, but when kids have two opportunities, two studios uh, where to come from, and a playground, a place, I'm sorry, playroom. Somehow, in several months or so, and in the end of the year, we uh, our, our studios uh, have been getting pretty empty, and the playroom uh, was getting pretty stuffed. And, uh, and this we understood that well, I guess that something's not working here. If nobody comes <laughs> to learn, then we are doing something wrong. <laughs> and um, we said, okay. At the moment, everybody's still happy. Yeah. How old? 
they were from uh, 3 to 13, I guess. Yes, no, no, 3 to 15 years old. Yeah, yeah. In different groups, they that were... Uh, sometimes they played all together, sometimes they played uh, only teenagers, so only younger, younger kids, but generally... Uh, at the end of the year, only two girls from uh, two mm, girls in uh, primary schools uh, uh, were attending generally the classes, I guess, because moms, uh, their moms told them that they should. And uh, they didn't know that they can say no. Uh, uh, that's it. Uh, in this, in the second uh, in the second year, they learn that they can. So we have a pretty empty classroom at all. Uh, and uh, I took a vacation because <laughs> something needed to be changed, and, I and went uh, for a visit in Frenna schools, uh, Frenna school in Moscow. And I enjoyed what was going on in there. And here we are talking about Frenna. Uh, I enjoyed what was going on in there. I returned to Kiev and said. Well, why don't we do a different school? Well, that sort of thing different, uh, obviously didn't work out. Uh, instead of uh, closing, uh, closing it up, uh, because uh, parents were starting to ask questions, that's when I went to vacation. Yeah. Yeah, a, a question. Yes, uh, sh should I return, uh, sh should I repeat, or oh, you are hearing? Uh -huh. Did I ask? Yeah, sure. Uh, generally, they avoided answering that question. They said that they looked like, well, ask somebody else. Well, he knows, so, well, mm, uh, uh, so yeah, they, they couldn't say why. They couldn't say why, but they definitely enjoyed uh, spending time together, uh, devising their own games, uh, uh, generally hide-and-seek or something, uh, or just catch. Uh, they enjoyed it much more. Uh, we had a, a theory. Well, they like... Play, uh, they like... Uh, Hiding games, uh, uh, hide, hiding games. Why shouldn't we get a studio on this and uh, and learn together? They are interested in that so much. Well, that was one more failure, <laughs> unfortunately. At when we start learning with kids things that they uh, like doing, they stop liking it, and, st and of course they don't learn. It's a very interesting topic because uh, I, I I don't know still why, why it's going why that going goes on, but well we went to Frenet School. Uh, who knows about Celestin Frenet? Okay, okay, Celestin Frenet. Uh huh. So so. Oh, so that's gonna be new information for you. I'm very uh, I'm very pleased. Celestin Frenet was. Uh, 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 how to say a, vill a village? Yes, uh, a village uh, teacher in uh, suburban France uh, in in 1920s, alongside with Maria Montessori, Rudolf Steiner, and uh, many uh, edu many more educators. That uh, epoch was quite rich for education uh, geniuses. In the uh, Makarenko in Ukraine was uh, I get. No, 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 not Makarenko, Suhomlensky in Ukraine was uh, living uh, in that uh, years as well. And uh, he had a problem because uh, in village uh, the schools are quite small. And uh, they can have 20 kids and uh, they all of those kids were of different ages. In the uh, the classics uh, of uh, the classical school didn't uh, work well in uh, in that setting. So what did he do? He said, "All right, I'm going to be the only teacher in uh, for the whole school, and uh, we have to understand how we work." What did he think? What did he? Uh, what was his? Mm, yes, philosophy, uh, innovation. He said. Dear friends, you can do in school whatever you like, generally whatever you like, but it wasn't enough. Uh, 
because generally only plague uh, or everybody i guess in uh, 100 years ago still ended up in playrooms so he uh, too understands that something more should be done and he added more specifics like uh, if uh, we are to s to learn uh, what uh, what is learned at school then we should devise uh, some activities and uh, he did a big worksheet for different uh, activities which uh, which could be done which could be done in school I'll, i'm going to go to i'm going to show it how how that works generally so he said we have math science languages art uh, and so on but we are all different, and uh, if we're talking about, f I don't know, language, we can work with uh, still, uh, there are many topics uh, that we can work with uh, in, uh, in language. And he said that kids can choose whatever they like, whatever they like, uh, am among uh, different activities. He devised them uh, about I don't know, the 10 activities for each uh, thing. Like, this is language, uh, science, and math. Uh, kid says, uh, my mother asked me to come to learn math. I'm, I'm not very, really, very, really, very interested about this, but uh, I was asked, and I'm a good boy. I will. So, uh, Stan Frenet told, if you go into math, you can do several stuff. First, you can have a, a workbook and w work with it. Maybe you are interested uh, about some uh, particular things. Like, uh, uh, in the end of the year, we need to make some renovations. And uh, we need to understand how much... Uh, how much paint we need to paint the room. Can you help? Oh, so can you measure the room? Can you understand the, oh, what is the amount of, uh, oh, of paint will we need in order to, to do it? And you, uh, the kid asks, can I do it? And instead of doing some uh, uh, boring stuff in mass, uh, Fernand said, yeah, sure. And uh, some kids started to uh, practical math, really. Uh, they've been uh, making some measurements. Uh, from measurements, they went to uh, more practical stuff, uh, like uh, uh, they went to a workshop and uh, helped with uh, renovations that included math as well. So they did the measurement. Uh, they did the measurements. They uh, went to the shop. They bought some stuff. Then they uh, participated in renovations and understood whether they were wrong or right. <laughs> like whether enough of paint or whether not. So that's practice. Uh, uh, they they were able to do some practice. Mm. Some kids uh, which uh, who mastered some topics, uh, mm, they didn't want to take part in, pr uh, in practice and they didn't want to learn more. And uh, Frené asked them, will you be able to uh, write the tasks uh, on the topic that you have mastered for other kids? And other kids will be able to take uh, those tasks and uh, work with them. And it was sure, invent your own. Invent your own. So generally, uh, that was the same with science, with languages. So in languages, they worked a lot with uh, free text. They uh, they've been working uh, instead of writing, um, you know, uh, essays on a given topic. They were writing essays on whatever they want to. When we uh, in introduced this thing in our school, we, we had amazing results because uh, we had a kid who really didn't, uh, who was quite slow and uh, it was quite difficult for him to learn the necessary program. Uh, and uh, he had some uh, autistic disorder. Uh, but we told him, Zhenya, that was his name, 
Uh, will you be? Uh, will you write uh, us uh, some stories about the superheroes that you uh, only uh, talk about? And he asked, "Can I? Like, I really? Uh, I can just write some stories about superheroes, and it's gonna be considered as work in school?" And we answered, "Sure." Well, generally, we didn't hear from uh, we didn't hear Genia for another two weeks. There was no really genia in in school because all his time he spent in his uh, at his uh, table writing and rewriting and rewriting and rewriting, and uh, he uh, when we've been checking on him sometimes like do you need help maybe or maybe can you please show your work what is uh, how are your results and uh, everything else genia uh, said that. No, 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 I'm pretty fine. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Yeah, I don't need your help. I won't show you anything. Uh, you can see that I'm working. Bye-bye. Uh, and uh, in the end, in the end, when he finished, or not really finished, when he stopped, uh, when he stopped working uh, on that, he agreed to read it. It was amazing. And uh, it was... Uh, I, amazing why because uh, well the stories uh, itself were amazing and second all the kids were so interested in them in those stories that they began to write their own stories about this and uh, with the, after they have written it uh, they have uh, tried to publish it so they went to computers and started to ask where is this letter and where is that letter uh, and uh, started to help each other so they started their typography which was uh, a friend a Celestan Frene uh, innovation as well so they uh, were working with live text no some textbook stuff but uh, the text, uh, the, the real conversation that kids are having. And uh, by this, we were able to drag real life into the classroom. Because we were talking, we were speaking, we were uh, writing about uh, real things that were of interest to kids. And the bonus to their parents was that they started to learn to write. And... Uh, like everybody was happy, and uh, free sp free text uh, and the pub free publishing uh, was very interesting. What is what was uh, generally the a what is uh, generally the aim of Frenet schools is to drag a real life into the classroom, make make it make it alive, uh, and uh, all the activities were mm, were practical really, and. Uh, they should have an, uh, they had to have an end result why in uh, usual let's say the usual school well, they kids have textbooks and f during the years they are writing some things in them they are practicing they are investing a lot of time pain energy in this and uh, in the end of the year what do teachers do with those textbooks they take it and they slowly throw it. First graders, in the end of the year, understand what was the end result of their work. That it just, it, it is thrown into the garbage. They are clever people. They understand that it is not worthy to work so much in order just to be thrown away. And their level of motivation to school work, to textbook, to copy books, to uh, everything, else, everything else is dropped. Yes, it's dropped to zero. Yes. Because they understand that the real thing is that nobody cares what the heck they are doing in school. Nobody cares about the level of their effort in school. Why should they? And they stopped, uh, they stopped learning. And Frenet understood it, and uh, he tried to make a real, real projects uh, the, in the school. Uh, he, the, um, in those texts, uh, he understood, and we understood then as well, what was interesting to kids. 
we understood their psychological problems as well, their relationships uh, problems, and we were talking about things that were of interest to of interest to them, and they opened up more, and uh, with opening up more, more energy was uh, free. Freed? Can can you say so, Freed? Well, yeah, I can. Thanks. Uh, more energy was freed, so they were more active, uh, and active participation uh, was uh, in fl uh, fire li lightened. Yes, lightened up others because they uh, saw that you can, you can, uh, if you don't want to go to the lesson, uh, you can do it. But new kids who went to school f at first said, yes, life is good, finally. Uh, finally, nobody drags me to the classroom. But when he was, uh, uh, when the lesson started and he was alone in the playroom, he was thinking, like, what is wrong with everybody else? Why is they in class studying things when they can go to a 12 playroom? And, uh, and here, a cultural work was working. When uh, they uh, when they understood that even uh, being able to uh, not to go to the classes, everybody else was going to the classes. He wanted uh, a new person wanted to fit in, and uh, he comes to the classroom as well. And he is immersed in this culture of uh, work, and, and generally everything was good until sometime. That's why. That's when we f uh, went further. If uh, have some summary of uh, Frene, it's practical school. You do uh, you do practical work in in school. You are interested in uh, how uh, how a computer work. You build a computer in here. Of course, in the process, you learn some math, you, uh, you write something, you draw something, so you, mm, you get more proficient in school stuff as well. And uh, the trick was to keep that life in the, cl in the classroom. If uh, at some moment it leaves, then uh, it just poof, it, 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 it goes to nothing. Age mixing was there as well, because kids were working uh, with uh, kids that uh, were friends to them or that have the same uh, interest uh, regardless of age. That was result-oriented. Free text was the basis of it. They've been, wor they've been writing quite a lot of it. And it was very interesting uh, to, well, uh, to more classical teachers, uh, those texts that uh, kids were writing. Uh, some teachers couldn't, uh, uh, couldn't work with that. Because, well, not all the texts that kids write are sunny and beautiful and uh, all the rosy and, uh, and adult friendly. No, they, they do write some brutal stuff uh, and uh, uh, teachers from classical school, they had some paradigm broke. Like a six-year kid is telling me the horror stories that I won't be able to... Uh, uh, after which I won't be able to sleep at night. They couldn't work. Uh, because that was some that th sometimes that was what happens. So I guess uh, a little bit of psychotherapy was working as well. And it did work because uh, why... Uh, uh, no. Kids that we are coming to our school, we uh, at the moment we've been one of two or three alternative gen alternative school in uh, Kiev, and it's uh, three to four million people in here. So all the kids that didn't uh, how to say fit in, thanks. So to all the kids that who didn't fit in, they uh, we, we had them. So we had a pretty interesting bunch of kids here. And uh, uh, they ca they came uh, well quite difficult to work with and to communicate with and generally to live with as well. Uh, but gradually, text by text, uh, human contact by human contact, uh, uh, kids eased up very much. And uh, uh, we had a very interesting situation. Uh, we had a kid 
mm, he was uh, 13 when he came when he came to us and very he was very introvert introverted uh, uh, very shy even uh, he was uh, working generally on his own and uh, like sunshine just uh, uh, a bit shaded one but generally well very pleasant and in two years time we learned that he was expelled from three schools for uh, fights and uh, for aggressive uh, for, for very aggressive behavior we were just dumbfounded uh, like how could it happen and we, then we understood that uh, the reason is quite simple. The, he didn't fit in. Uh, he didn't have uh, atmosphere, a relationship, generally a school that uh, that was okay to, to him. And uh, boys, they fight. Uh, girls, gen no, generally, that is what we see. They do. Uh, they are more uh, conform. C conforming. Yes. Con they are more conforming, they uh, and uh, parents have uh, less problem or problems with them. So for f for five years or for five years or so, we were generally boys only school. Yes, and uh, if we had girls, that was only the second or third child in the family because the parents didn't want to risk with the first one, I guess. With the second one, with the third one, well, okay, let's try it out. It doesn't really matter. We have a firstborn son or <laughs> something like this. And uh, it was very interesting to observe the transformational process of uh, kids with problems to kids who were more relaxed. The funny thing was that when, uh, when parents uh, saw that uh, their kids uh, have... Uh, Beca uh, they they became uh, more at ease, more confident, just more pleasant to live with. They took it out from the school and they said, thank you. It's been great. Uh, now he's finally ready to the real work and let's do it. Not even understanding that the exact thing that was uh, uh, that was transforming them, they were want they, they wanted to get back to it. That was quite uh, that was quite often. Yeah. And uh, after some time, uh, what was the ne next reason of uh, changing uh, our uh, educational paradigm as well? I got bored. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm sorry. That was my school. Uh, that the school was mine, and I got bored. I was uh, I want to do something else. And we changed the per educational paradigm as well. And um, at that moment, uh, at that moment, I was uh, I got very interested in uh, constructivism of uh, I think John Dewey and uh, yes, John Dewey uh, generally. And what I learned that uh, there is a whole bunch of schools uh, which are based on this constructivism uh, uh, theory. They are called the uh, International Baccalaureate Schools. Who knows about International Baccalaureate? Uh, not, not, not many. It's very interesting. Those are very interesting schools. I do recommend uh, you to uh, uh, learn a bit uh, about it. Generally, uh, International Baccalaureate. Uh, some in seventy in seventy years, uh, when the transport and informational technology uh, was developing very rapidly, people start to move around the world, and uh, for those expats, uh, they wanted the kids to have an education. But when you go to United States, to Burma, to Afghanistan, to uh, I don't know, Canada, Laos, and something else, it was quite impossible to have the same level of education. And uh, I don't know what was in between, uh, like how did they influence uh, the, the, the start of uh, IB school or international baccalaureate schools, but a lot of, uh, I, I do believe that quite clever uh, educational specialists were uh, gathered up and uh, they devised an educational program which is based on constructivism, uh, which uh, is... Uh, Generally, John Dewey, is, uh, as far as I remember, f which was to be implemented in international schools around the world. 
So you come to each international school, whatever you, whenever you are, and you can expect generally the same level of education. What is it? They've been working quite, uh, quite, qu quite a lot, and the uh, system is very beautiful. I, I do admire it, and uh, uh, a lot of it we uh, obtained in our existing e educational model. First, it is based on uh, international mindedness. So the system was to study for the whole world, not a national, uh, not national level. So it was so for cosmopolites, for the people of the whole world, generally, I'm repeating myself. How was it done? They've been working with, uh, they are working with interdisciplinary topics. There are six of them. Who we are, who, who we are as a nation, who we are as people, who we are biologically, uh, generally, who we are. It, this is an inquiry. Uh, kids, at the beginning of the topics, uh, at the beginning of the topic, they, uh, together with the teacher, have an exact, uh, exact inquiry. Uh, uh, like, are we mammals, really? Or maybe we are from outer space. And for six to eight weeks, they are inquiring into the topics, in, into this topic of who we are. So there are six of them. Who we are, where we are in place in time. Third, how we express ourselves. And that's my favorite, because they do singing, they do theater, uh, they uh, write poems, do very interesting stuff. Uh, sharing the planet, how we do it, how we share our planet with uh, everybody else uh, and everything else. How the world works, different systems, uh, different, uh, uh, generally it's about system, how international economics works, how politics works, how physics works, for God's sake, uh, and how we organize ourselves. So how do we learn to live with each other as uh, people and as uh, a society in general? These six topics, they are repeated from year to year. And uh, in uh, each, uh, e each topic have some specifics. So in first year, for example, uh, in uh, how we express ourselves, uh, first graders can uh, do some, I don't know, some singing. In uh, second grade, uh, they can do something else. In fifth grade, they can do a more, mm, more complex activity. And uh, that is the same for each, uh, for each of these topics. The older kids get, the more uh, complex activities they are working with, the more difficult, if it's possible to say, inquiry uh, topics they are inquiring it. Thanks. In, uh, this is the basis of uh, international baccalaureate. And uh, similar to the Frenner system, the end result of the topic should be practical as well. There are two, uh, there are two options. First, exhibition, so, like show what you have done. Uh, and second is action. Well, I don't know. About sharing, if, if they are working with sharing the planet, they are what, what we did. We were working with uh, sorting of the garbage, plastics, paper, uh, plast and so on. And what we did in the end, we implemented this uh, sorting system in our school. Uh, so we have different, uh, I don't know how to yeah, uh, ba baskets for different garbage. We uh, contacted organizations that were uh, recycling it. We arranged that they will uh, come to our school, take it. We uh, sell the used paper and so on. So, and in different of uh, those topics, there, there should, in the end, there should be different uh, actions in the end. So the goal is uh, not. Uh, the goal is to change a mindset. And uh, the best uh, thing to show that the mindset is changed is to perform some actions uh, based on your new mindset, if it's possible to say so. 
And second very interesting thing uh, is they in the IB in IB settings they uh, were working specifically on uh, thinking skills. It was almost like with Greek philosophers uh, who were uh, working with with those things. One of the goal of uh, IB of International Baccalaureate was understanding key concepts: form, what is it like, function, how does it work, causation, why is it like it is, change, how is it changing, perspective. What are the points of view, opinion, beliefs? How do we really know what we know, etc.? Responsibility. What is our responsibility? And reflection. How do we know what we know? I'm sorry? Uh, oh, good. Uh, there's a photocopy. You can photocopy it in the end. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Frenna School, uh, Frenna School, in, ah, International Baccalaureate, IB, Baccalaureate, I'm sorry, Baccalaureate. En français, c'est ça, je crois. Yeah, those French words that come to English, they're impossible to spell. Uh, and in in each country, uh, generally, you know, not um, uh, more than a uh, more than a hundred countries in the world, they have those. Uh, they have this system. Uh, it is quite democratic, because uh, at the beginning of each topic, uh, adults together with uh, kids, they uh, divide the exact uh, specifics of the inquiry. What are they going to inquire about? And what is inquiry generally? Uh, there's not a, a teacher who says, well, you, all, uh, you have decided to work with uh, sorting garbage. Let me tell you, let me speak from my heart, as a uh, Russian uh, person said. No, it's not the case. They said, well, you have all the materials available. Here are books, here is internet, uh, there are your peers, your parents, your grandparents, uh, gather your information. And uh, our task is to help you. Um, if uh, uh, we are talking about kids who are new to inquiry, like first graders, they have an option. Dear kids, here you can uh, ask your question to your peer and gather your uh, responses, or you can uh, uh, look in the in the book and uh, and, and then tell what have you uh, what have you learned from it. So just you choose from two options. The older the kids get, the more experienced they are in inquiry. The borders of inquiry uh, is bigger as well. So uh, we, if we are talking about uh, nine graders, ten graders, uh, the sources that, that they can use for inquiry is unlimited. Are unlimited. So generally, have your new knowledge, and uh, each person have some uh, different set of uh, knowledge that uh, he, in the end, shares with others. So different kids in one uh, class they have uh, different knowledge in the end. It's quite democratic as well, uh, from, my, uh, from my point of view. After some times, I got bored as well. And uh, like it, it was okay. It was working quite fun, but no, fine, but not perfectly. So why don't we do something else? Mm, and we did something else. Right now, we have a system of uh, three, how do you say, three school days and two totally free days. Uh, kids in Ukraine, they have to pass exam in the end of the year, regardless of the school setting they are in. In, uh, in Russia, it's better. It's, uh, yeah, they can do it once every five to ten years. But here, they have to do it every year. Uh, and uh, it would be nice if they have uh, a tiny bit of understanding in order to tell that they've been to school, really, and they don't need social services to get to their home. And uh, we are three days we work with uh, national curriculum. How? 
once uh, uh, one of these three days is our teacher day. It's a chance for teacher to shine to sp send the brilliant of knowledge to the kids, uh, to perform, uh, like I was told at the, mo at the, at the, at the start of this uh, session. And, uh, but kids are still free to uh, go to or not to go. And two days are uh, like in Frene, in Frene system, when kids choose the activities uh, on themselves. Uh, first graders, second graders, they uh, plan for a day. Uh, sixth graders, um, just averagely, they plan for the whole week. Like, what is it that they are going to work with in school? What they uh, want to learn? What they want to do generally? Because uh, nobody wants to learn. Uh, everybody wants to have already the knowledge that enables him to do something. And uh, generally, their plans are like this. They plan to on uh, doing something, not on learning something. Learning is just a byproduct of uh, performance, of doing. And uh, two days, these are totally free days. Uh, we don't uh, care about our national curriculum, and uh, uh, we, uh, we call them samokhotinya uh, in Ukrainian. Uh, sel yes, self one Self-desired, yes. Yeah, Self-desired days uh, when uh, Kids uh, uh, teach to others whatever they want to. The best master classes that they have is uh, why do uh, it's very specific words. Um, uh, why do we cry, for example, or why some uh, unpleasant uh, things are gro uh, grows in our nose when we don't want it, or, or uh, why do we ha why do we sneeze? Uh, why other people behave like this uh, to us and not to uh, others? So the topics that they are working with, that they are learning, that they are teaching each other, are about everything because well, national curriculum is one tiny percentage of the general knowledge of uh, that, that we have and uh, that is interested to kids and those two days they are working on totally free whatever they want to and uh, and we introduced uh, a flipped classroom approach who knows about flipped classroom yeah Oh, that's uh, more modern, uh, and uh, more people know it. Uh, why we did we did, did, did we introduce flipped classroom? What is flipped classroom? Uh, kids uh, study on their own, and when they gather at school, they only uh, they are prepared generally, and they do some interesting and creative stuff, so not uh, some stupid one, and. Uh, why did we introduce flipped classroom as well? Because uh, some kids, or, or, or kids in general, it's quite hard to say right now, uh, we're developing quite consumeristic approach. Like, okay, I'm gonna come to, this, to the class, uh, teach me something, and uh, they didn't want to uh, make an input to, hmm, they they were not really motivated, and uh, when they came uh, uh, when they came to the classroom, it was like an alibi, alibi. alibi. Uh, like here I am, I am learning. Uh, I can I uh, came to to the class to learn, while in fact it wasn't the case, uh, so because. Uh, Maybe they agreed with their parents that they will come to the class and just learn something. But after they came to the class, and it was uh, mostly about teenagers, they were trying uh, to make the most for themselves, so to talk, to disrupt the discipline, to do everything but to learn. And we asked them, ladies and gentlemen, do you still remember that we are free school? You do have to. You don't have to come to, to the class in order to do all of this. There is a special place for it. Why do you come here and disrupt the, the disrupt our classes? Why do you not? Why do you come here if you are not learning? If you don't want to learn? But that's a phenomenon that we encountered. It was the case. 
they did come to the class when they didn't want to learn. And then they uh, were everything but not about learning. And what we, uh, what we introduced is a flipped classroom approach. If you want to come to the class, please be prepared. Uh, in the end of uh, the previous class, uh, we were uh, we knew the topic for the next one, and uh, what was needed in order to participate in the classroom. So generally, we wanted them to pay for their uh, possibility to be in the classroom, and uh, it was. Uh, not the motivation that we are often uh, that we often that we often hear from other speakers when they said that how to get kids to go to the classroom, how to uh, to get them to learn. We should do gamification. We should do it maximally fun and interesting. We did quite the opposite. We did it hard. We did it brutal, and we asked them to work very well in order to get to the classroom, and it worked. The fun stuff was that it worked, uh, and uh, kids who uh, wanted to learn, they did uh, a share of the work before the class, then they went to the class, and they worked even better. And those who didn't, uh, uh, who didn't do their share, but they still wanted to come, uh, they were a guest from, from Park School System. So you have a right to come to the class, but you have a right only to be a guest. You don't have a, a, a right to participate. You can only hear what is going on. And quite a lot of them, they, they were guests. And uh, uh, we, in our electronic, uh, in our online um, uh, diary, uh, we put a letter in, in, in Ukrainian, he. Uh, uh, well, that's uh, a beginning of not uh, good, uh, of some not very uh, pleasant words in Ukrainian. But like, we only f put the first word, <laughs> uh, I guess it, I in English it could be S. No, who knows what does it mean? Uh, and uh, that is the system like we have in the moment. As you can see, for nine years, we changed one, two, three, uh, and uh, right now we are in our fourth system. We don't think that uh, educational system, uh, educational paradigm is that much important. More important is the concept of democratic school, the right of uh, kids to live their own life. But for adults and for founders of the schools, I guess that it should be fun as well. If you get bored with this, change it. Do something else. It doesn't really matter, uh, that's what we believe, it doesn't really matter what you are working and how you are working as long as the general values and ethics uh, is in place. Like, do whatever. And even in, a cl in a, even a very classical school with very classical approach, with rigid discipline, uh, can work very fine for kids as long as there's relationship present as long as there's respect for the kids it can be it can turn very well as well that is all i have to say about the war in vietnam <laughs> like forest count uh two answers uh, what was the obstacle in shifting to uh, from uh Frenet to other schools actually Kids don't have problems with shifting from educational paradigm to other educational paradigm. They don't really give a damn what is going on there. Uh, we are working like this. No problem. Fine. I still can uh, can play with others if I want to. I still can learn in uh, the way that I want to if I want to. So generally, it was g only for us adults to uh, to do something different. That was our playground. No, no real obstacles. Uh, it was all, always interesting because there was something new. We have new sparkle of energy, uh, but maybe that is just maybe that's uh, why we are the way we are. Maybe for more, uh, uh, I don't know, um, people who uh, who like. Uh, the same stuff again and again, and uh, they have, they might have fear for some new things. It would be mm, it would be unpleasant. But I guess that we uh, we will and we are 
uh, a bunch of uh, young girls and uh, boys with uh, sparkling eyes and we are just getting bored during uh, doing a lot of the same uh, for quite a lot of time. So we change pretty much every three years. And second, separate versus uh, all-inclusive. Like, can you, uh, should you go from one system to, uh, to other system to other system, or can you implement uh, all at once? Um, right now, we have parts of uh, different educational paradigms in our school. So I do believe that that's possible to do it. But before, uh, before we took something that is ours from those systems, we needed to understand what is not ours. So before uh, making uh, the change, uh, making synthesis, we, we had to work on each individual paradigm. And only after a year or two or three years of working with them, we understood what we like and what we don't, what works for us and what doesn't work for us. That's generally it. Any more questions? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, about uh, those uh, is this is the setting of democratic school. I wasn't uh, talking about uh, that, but yes, we have a school meeting where we decide all the rules that we have in school, and uh, I know generally it's uh, only about the rules. Punishment. We have physical punishment generally. Kids wanted physical punishments: push-ups, sit-downs, and <laughs> that's it. Yes. Uh, they have five, five lessons for 45 minutes with some, with some, yes. Yeah. No, they don't. Uh, no, we have uh, school meetings we have once a week. Uh, and uh, if, uh, when we decide, a, when we plan a week as well. Uh, we have uh, some rules uh, uh, working and uh, week planning. And uh, during the day, they come at from 10 to 9, uh, from 10, from 9 to 10, I'm sorry. I didn't want to, uh, when I was uh, little, I didn't like to wake up early in the morning. So uh, we start our lessons at 10 o'clock. And uh, half of the parents say, thankfully, we don't have to wake up early as well. And from uh, 10 o'clock till 3 p.m., they have five lessons, uh, different, one, uh, different ones. If kids want to work with uh, only with math or in workshop or the only with one activity, they can do it as well. But generally, uh, the majority of kids uh, is fine with uh, doing uh, math, for example, then art, then music, then uh, something else. Yes. Yes, one teacher. <coughs> generally, we have two groups uh, because the uh, the schools are small. We have three schools uh, with sixteen to twenty kids, uh, aged uh, six to twelve, I guess. Uh, there are two groups working simultaneously, and the uh, kids choose either because of age, uh, either because they like one teacher more. Either because they, uh, their friend uh, went to that group and uh, they went to that group as well. Yeah. But they can also decide to do nothing? Sure. We, we have three rooms. We have two groups, but three rooms. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 So they all have to do with that? Yes. Now, I'm not quite understanding how that works. I'd like to, but I'm not understanding practically. Uh, it is uh, quite uh, time consuming uh, for adults as well. Uh, after the kids with adults have decided on the specifics of the topics, uh, the adults uh, work uh, among themselves uh, to. Uh, there is a PYP. Uh, you can 
have a look uh, in internet PYP planner uh, and they plan in the topic uh, what resources are going to be uh, needed and they uh, gather those resources in the classroom now, for example this is if this is a uh, family history things uh, they drag some old papers old photographs uh, old uh, just all things they asked uh, they are uh, they ca asked the kids to conduct interviews with grandfather grandparents and to uh, uh, some uh, to bring some artifacts from 100 years old in the classroom and then they inquire in this setting uh, for this 6 weeks or uh, they tell stories they, sto they tell stories they invite guests uh, in the and then they have i guess some um, each the understanding of the history uh, yeah, generally from four to eight weeks, depending on the topic. Yes. Questions, how did kids understand, uh, how, how did they understand that they move from one system to another and uh, how parents perceive that? No, uh, they how does parent treat the changes or you are you not afraid to lose parents that are uh, first uh, we are still working five days a week it's just that uh, two days uh, they are working on whatever they want to the whatever they're interested in and uh, sometimes parents don't bring their kids in three days because they choose uh, to invest into different activities. And that's nice as well, because we are small schools. We, can, uh, we don't have many resources. I don't know. Uh, we don't have an indoor pool or, I don't know, curlings uh, in, in our school. And p kids who are interested in that particular activities they are free to go some somewhere else understanding that they won't uh, lose anything and uh, second part uh, uh, how parents uh, live through all those uh, changes well we have a pleasure of being a freak school and uh, we have a pleasure of uh, working with freak parents uh, if only on the inside like on the outside they can look very pretty normal but on the inside, uh, they're quite, they quite freaks. So generally, we have found our, uh, how can Robinson puts it, niche? Uh, no, niche, yes, it's possible to say so. The, the people who are close to us on uh, our values. And uh, they said, something new, great, let's do it. Something new, great, let's do it. We did lose... 90% of parents during transition transitional period. We, we are fine with this, yes. We, uh, we uh, stayed with uh, freaks of the freaks, I guess. <laughs> yes. We... We don't really care, yes, about the results that we are getting. We are interested uh, only in the process. If everybody is happy, if we are having fun, we are doing it. Uh, screw the uh, KPI and, uh, and, and everything else. We don't, because who are the judges? Uh, when, when do we, uh, period of time when we have tests or something? Like it's just impossible. If we are, if we see that kids are fine, if we uh, know that they that uh, parents are fine and we are fine, we're doing it. Whatever. We don't have. We are not a public company who has his uh, who has stakeholders and have to show big reports. No, we are not. Uh, as long as we have a queue of new parents who would like to go to a school, we know that we are safe. So we can do whatever we like. And we are doing it. Thank you. Yeah. No, we don't have. Uh, we don't uh, have homework. Yes. In school, 
uh, there are different classes. They don't go to one class. They work uh, on themselves with a tutor on themselves. Uh, we speak with them uh, almost every day when they come to the school, and uh, we establish and we, we hope and we aim to establish a good working relationships with them, so they trust us, and they uh, and that's the most important thing. So and and then we on day to day basis we are talking on only only this way. We don't have marks. Bezotinok. Uh, you mean the f they finished school like 11th uh, form? Uh, we In three schools, we have around 70 kids, if that is the question that you're asking. Yes, th that is the question. We have zero p people who have uh, studied for 11 years in our school because the school itself is only nine years old, at least that's that's the reason. Zero, zero, because ninety percent of the, we lost about ninety percent of uh, the parents generally uh, during this time because of our transitions from period to period, uh, and uh, we are quite stable the last uh, three years, and uh, I, I believe that eighty percent of the kids who enrolled three years ago are still with us. For how long, I don't know. Um, that is not criminal. Uh, I, nobody holds criminal judges against me at the moment, so n not yet. <laughs> as long as we have, maybe I will need to move to another country <laughs> that, don't pro that doesn't prosecute. You said in Ukraine you need uh, to have uh, some works uh, during the year for the children, and uh, they have marks for you or no? Yes, but the school uh, which has a license, uh, the, the manager of the school who has the license is giving speech uh, nearby and we have a nice relationships, uh, so we don't really do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is yes, Ukraine. Yaroslav, uh, I personally appreciate today's like uh, speech and, and, and everything, every experience, and your openness and your Thanks. freakiness. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so appealing. Uh, <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, we have to finish. All right. Uh, yeah, some rules. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, so if you would like to ask Yaroslav some additional questions, you're free to come and just personally. Yeah, personally, mm -hmm. I would kindly ask you to move to the alt room uh, to finish today's program. And yeah, round of applause to Yaroslav. Uh, you can also uh -oh. leave, a f leave a feedback and ask uh, and, and leave a feedback about today's uh, masterclass in the app. Uh, don't hesitate to do that as well. Thank I will you. be in Vinnytsia for the whole second part of the conference, so I would like I would like to speak with uh, everybody personally. Thanks. Можна зараз я вийду віддам свою штукенцію. А кому? Кому це віддати? Не вам, не вам. Все супер, Тарас. Це вам треба. Дякую.